I'm Brian Van, SportBikeTrackGear.com. Today we're going to install a Vortex V3 chain kit on our 2015 Yamaha YZF R1 STG project bike. I'm going to go with a 520 chain kit for this. We've got a hard-coated aluminum black rear sprocket. It's a new design actually. Steel front sprocket. And we're going to go with their 520 RV3 racing chain that's meant for up to 1,000 cc's. For gearing, I'm actually just going to use stock. I'm going to Daytona uh, next week, actually, and I want to be able to get as much top speed out of the bike as I can, so we're going to go with the stock gearing. The times I've ridden the bike so far this year, I actually, I'd have to say that the stock gearing for me worked pretty well at the tracks that I've went to thus far. In this video, we're also going to be showcasing a chain tool that I think is pretty darn intuitive. This is the Motion Pro PBR chain tool. It's meant for 520, 525, and 530 chains. What that means is it is meant for motorcycle guys, street bike guys, okay? Very intuitive. We'll go through it in this video, and then we'll also have a separate video that showcases just how to use this. Let's talk tools first. What do we need to put a chain kit on a bike? Key is you gotta have a chain tool, chain breaker, chain river. That tool is going to do both for us, the Motion Pro PBR chain tool. A variety of hand tools. The most important and exotic ones are going to be the sockets that we'll use to get the big nut off the actual drive shaft, okay? And then the big nut off of the axle. What's also important is the order in which you proceed here, okay? A lot of people want to dive into it and cut the chain right off. When you do that, it makes getting that front sprocket, the counter shaft sprocket off, real hard. We want to make that as easy as possible, and we're going to do it using just a half inch ratchet today, because I feel like that's the tool that most people are going to have at home. To open this up, I need to come over here, remove the shift rod. We have to get the counter shaft sprocket cover off so we have access to that sprocket nut. You want to leave the transmission in neutral so you're not putting any stress on any of the internals of the trans. That is also very important. On the R1 here, we have three fasteners, five millimeter T-handle works for, holding on the counter shaft sprocket cover. And last one is down here. Get this one without the bodywork removal. It's also a good opportunity to clean these things up, all right? Even with the factory chain, there's a lot of lube on it. It all gets thrown inside of this cover. It's nice every time you take it off to get a chance to clean it. I'll wipe it and then take it over to my parts washer and wash it up nicely. If you don't have a parts washer at home, some simple degreaser, some rags will also work just fine. You can see here, it's kind of nasty on the inside. You'll see even more here. Now, breaking this loose. You can have somebody sit on the bike, puts a little weight, right, on the rear end. The tire will dig in, have them push on the rear brake. You can try that. Um, what I've done a lot of times, honestly, is I'll just use an impact, right, and break it loose and the trans is in neutral. I don't really feel like that's a big deal. Uh, we're gonna start by seeing if we can just break it loose. Without doing anything and we're not going to be able to all right the tire had pretty good grip on the table but it wasn't quite enough so now what do you do one thing that you can do is wedge something in through the swing arm so it holds the wheel so the wheel can't turn okay you want to make sure if you do choose that method that you've got some type of padding on all the surfaces so that you're not going to damage the wheel when we come back i'm going to have a setup installed in there so i can break this loose Okay, once again, I'm trying to think like I'm working at home in my garage and I don't have a giant toolbox full of stuff, right? How would I do this? What I did is I took, I have a long pry bar. If you had a long screwdriver, I think this is a pretty common tool if you're wrenching on your stuff. Now you're thinking, man, I don't want to scratch my swing arm. I don't want to scratch my wheel. Well, we all also have duct tape, which is one of the most phenomenal tools in the universe. I wrapped duct tape everywhere that it would touch a metal surface to protect it. You'll see there's quite a bit in the area where the spoke of the wheel would touch, okay? So that 
is going to hold the wheel, which will in turn hold the chain, and allow me to break this bad boy loose. Okay, I already rotated the tire up into position, and now I'm gonna break this loose. So there you have it. There's an effective way to do that at home with realistically not having any type of, you know, super secret special tool. Okay, now I want to get that thing out of there. So I'm going to use my good old rear stand here and get the bike lifted up so that I can jump in there, rotate the wheel backwards, and pull out my duct tape. Pry bar. We're going to use that to tighten things back up, so leave it as it sits. Now, we're able to get this off without any problem. So we'll finish that part of the job. And then we'll be ready to break the stock chain. Let's go ahead and thread that off. This is actually a staked nut. There is a groove in the counter shaft right here. And what they do with the nut is they stake it down. Okay, there's one on either side, they stake it down and it acts as like mechanical Loctite. Got your washer and your nut, those will both be reused. The Motion Pro PBR chain tool. Full color illustrations, right? It's gonna show us how to set this bad boy up and break the chain. We have a separate video that we're going to be doing that will show us using this tool exclusively and really focusing on how it's used. So if this is something you're interested in, go to that product listing on the site and watch that full video. And now we're ready to pull the chain apart. You can see how clean of a job that did. All right. Literally pushes the head off the rivet link pushes it right through, and now we're able to remove our stock chain. Okay, now that we have the chain off, we're gonna go ahead and remove the rear wheel. Got my axle socket here. Remove the axle nut, we've got a driven endurance cup on here. Sweet. It's a gorgeous motorcycle. Push the axle through. Support the wheel. Slide it out, and this will allow us to change the rear sprocket. Okay, we're going to start by installing the new counter shaft sprocket. Once again, before we reassemble anything completely, I'm going to get in here, I'm going to clean up all the chain sliders and all this stuff, right? Clean up the engine case, clean up the frame. But we'll go ahead and slide over the counter shaft sprocket for now. Take the stock one off. I want you to set it on the table. And this is how you determine, you know, which direction, because this sprocket's offset, the thickness, right? Which direction does it get installed? Does it get installed this against the counter shaft or this way? Well, we'll start with the vortex name coming out. You can see how much farther down the sprocket sits as compared to the stock. Okay, and what I like to do is actually get down at eye level, right, and look at it. But this one is going to need to go with the boss towards the engine case, like so. I'm going to put on, very loosely, the nut so I don't forget this later. It's on super loose right now. I'm going to come back to the rear sprocket and get this prepped and ready. You can see that sprocket they developed for this. It's a new pattern for them. Good looking sprocket. This is the hard coated version. Go ahead and remove our stock sprocket. That was actually tight enough, I broke that thin-walled deep well, so let's start over here and uh, finish this off.
Once again, if you want to use a torque wrench, feel free to do so. This is also a great opportunity to clean up the rear wheel and the cush drive and stuff. This is pretty clean, so it won't take but a hot second to do it. When we come back, we'll be bolting on the rear sprocket. Okay, what you want to do is you want to start off by running each one down essentially, you know, finger tight, right? So they're all just seated. And then in a crisscross pattern, we're going to go ahead and torque these. I'll pass over it two times. Once again, if you feel more comfortable with a torque wrench, use that. You'll find virtually any torque spec online. With an easy search. Now we're ready to put the wheel back on the bike. Okay, while I've got the rear wheel off, you know what I've decided? Two things are going to happen here. Thing one is I'm going to go ahead and remove this chain guard, and I notice the inside of my swing arm is looking a little worse for wear, and I'd like to clean that up as well. I mean, you can see all that chain loop flings up in there. Show the inside of the swing arm as well. So, we'll be back as soon as I get this stuff all cleaned up nicely. Okay, now we're ready to get the rear wheel back on the motorcycle. Get around the caliper here. Got everything cleaned up nice. Looking good. Using my pit bull. Pit crew tire holder, love that thing. I'm gonna put just a little bit of grease on this axle now. And just, you'd be surprised, just a thin film, right, can make a huge difference on disassembly and reassembly. We will not be torquing this right now because I don't know exactly where I'm going to set my wheelbase just yet. The tolerance is pretty tight as it passes through the Litec uh, axle adjuster. So still got to push it through there. They have a very tight tolerance to hold the axle in a certain spot. Now it's time to get the chain prepped and get it on the bike. We've got to make some decisions. You know, I'm starting off with a stock sprocket here. You know, in the future, maybe I would use a bigger one. If we lengthen the wheelbase too much, it's going to slow the handling of the bike, right? If we shorten the wheelbase too much, I won't be able to put a bigger sprocket on. The bike can get a little bit nervous. You know, that chassis geometry can definitely have some impact on the handling of the motorcycle. So I want to think about all that as I go through it. First thing I'm going to do, is get the chain out and get this chain ready for installation. You can see it comes packed in a tremendous amount of chain grease. I'm going to want to clean a lot of this off before we really get started. So I'm going to get it out of the package here. Go ahead and get the chain link. You know, you don't want to go crazy and dry the whole chain out, but there is just way too much chain lube on that right now. So different cleaners you can use. You know, you want to use chain friendly stuff. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use a little bit of mineral spirits on a rag and just clean it off. Okay. Not a crazy amount, not submerging it, just a little bit of mineral spirits on a rag. I've seen other guys at the racetrack just hose them down with brake cleaner and wipe them down. It will dry the seals off externally just a little bit, nothing internal because remember it's all sealed, right? This is an O-ring style chain. So get it cleaned off so you're not flinging this stuff all over your bike, and then we'll be ready to set the chain length. Okay, now we're ready to slide the chain right on the motorcycle. Uh, one thing I'm gonna do is just run down the nut here on the counter shaft sprocket just a little bit. All right. Just hand tight, and don't forget that. It's very important that you remember to get that tightened up all the way. See, I've got the chain prepared and ready to go. 
And what I'm going to do is start from the back and move to the front. The uh, chain itself is pretty well uh, cleaned off. Okay, before this motorcycle gets ridden, the chain's going to get lubed again. The real critical areas on an O-ring chain are going to be the O-rings being lubricated and then all of the links, the pins through the chain are lubricated internally. That's what really needs to be done. That's done at the factory when it's sealed, okay? Once the links are pressed on, there's no way to get any more grease inside of there. What it comes with internally, that's it. Okay, now let's have a look. Certainly we've got plenty of chain. Okay, so that's the good news. Now we need to decide what, what am I going to do in terms of axle length? Do I want to leave myself room to go with a bigger sprocket? Do I want to just continue to ride with what I have? You need to make those decisions before you cut your chain. You cut your chain, that's it. Chain is cut. There's no going back. Okay, you need another chain if you cut the chain too short. And what you can't do is you can't ride on a chain and then add links back to a chain because as you ride on a chain, it begins to stretch. Any links that have not been ridden on will not be stretched. So you can end up with binding if you try to add to a chain. That's a very, very bad idea. So for myself and what I'm doing right now on the motorcycle, honestly, I like where the wheelbase was at. Looking at it, we are perhaps a little farther forward than we are rearward. I enjoyed the handling of the bike. There was nothing nervous about it. It steers, in my mind, like a 600. I want to keep it pretty darn close to that. So I'm going to set it up to run pretty close to the wheelbase that I have right now. In order to get there, I will need to hold the chain and decide where can I cut this to stay within that wheelbase. And I could bring the wheelbase a little shorter if I went with cutting here, All right? If I don't cut there, then I have to cut up here, which is going to result, that's a lot of slack, that's going to result in a much longer wheelbase. So what I'm going to do to begin with is I'm going to shorten up the wheelbase just a little bit. I think I know where I want to cut it right now, so I'm going to mark that. I'm going to shorten up the wheelbase a little bit, get an idea of what would the wheelbase look like there, because remember, we're going to have a little bit of stretch, and I've already tightened this chain twice on this bike. It stretched. The 525 chain actually stretched quite a bit, so this axle was a lot further forward stock than it is right now. So I'm going to take a minute. I'm going to think about that. When we come back, I'm going to be cutting the chain. Okay. I moved the chain adjusters around a little bit. I decided, you know, this is going to be the most logical point for me to break the chain. Okay, and as I said, you, know, you got to take some time. You really got to think about this. And I think this is going to be the best possible spot. It's going to keep me closest to where I was, which is where I want to be. Now we'll be ready to slide our master link through. Before I go ahead and put all the O-rings and everything in place, what I want to do is I just want to kind of get things sized up and make sure that I'm going in the direction that I intended. So we're going to slide it together like so. Let's see how much slack we have in the chain. So, if you look at it, I mean, that's got me really close to where I was, and this chain is not stretched at all yet. Okay, so I like the spot I picked. Go ahead and loosen this up a little bit now. And that'll allow us to get the chain put together. Now, with our rivet link, we have four O-rings. We have a plate, and then we have the link itself. It's 
very important that everything is well lubricated, especially when the link passes through the chain itself, that is where the lube needs to be. So what I did is I went and got my Motul chain paste, same idea right, as the stuff that was all over this chain. And what I'm gonna do is put a bunch of that inside the female portion here of the chain. So when the male portion of the link goes through, it's gonna push it through. Lubricate the sides a little bit. Pass that on. Now, pass that link through. Same thing here. See how all the lube came through with it. And then we get our new plate out. Two O-rings. The plate. Sometimes the chain paste will hold it in place, this won't. I'm gonna grab a pair of pliers and just put just the tiniest bit of pressure on that. Just so it'll hold everything in place while we get ready to press the plate on itself. Just have a pair of simple slip joint pliers here. And just a tiny tiny bit of pressure that's going to hold that in place and really make our job a whole heck of a lot easier okay i've got the chain close it's not tensioned all the way i do want to get prepared to uh snug up that counter shaft so i'm going to put the pry bar back in there which i'm going to utilize for the same purpose i did earlier hold the wheel in place once again, torque wrench, if you prefer to use it, now's a great time to grab it. Definitely not something you want coming loose. Now we'll get a punch and a hammer, and I'll show you how to stake that down. Okay. Remember this one is gonna be done twice. Let's start here at the top. I've got a punch and a hammer. That's all you need, just like that. You don't need to get crazy on it. Rotate it around. You're able to do this a few times with a nut like this. You could also safety wire this if you choose to. You could cross drill the nut and then go through one of these holes on the actual sprocket itself. So if you wanted to safety to work, you could do it. Honestly, what we just did there will suffice without any issue. Now we are ready to go ahead and tension the chain. Of course, there are specifications. This is something that I'm constantly looking at when I'm out on track. Okay. I want to start off somewhere around, let's say 50, 50 millimeters and, uh, slack here so let's try and get this lined up uh, pull it down normal pressure uh, 75 push up about 32 so let's try loosening just a little bit here make sure the axle is all the way forward Try to be in about the same spot. 82. And about 32. So 
I'm going to go right there. That is going to be the chain tension I'm looking for. Looking at the LiTeX adjusters, uh, 34 millimeters. 34, those are both perfectly even. Now, I have this really cool tool here from Bike Master. Motion Pro has one too. Just get an idea how how true the chain's running. Basically put it on the sprocket like so. Okay. And rotate it up. Move it back just a little bit here. So we can get it level. You want the pendulum to line up with the line on there and then, yeah, that's pretty darn straight right there. The straighter the wheel is running, right, the straighter the chain is running, the less friction you're going to have and honestly less friction equals more power and also longer life. This is a very simple tool. They have tools that are a little more complex than this that are available for a little higher cost, but uh, these are a great place to start and help you get your drivetrain alignment in place. Okay, we've got a little reassembly to do. I need to retorque the rear axle, and I'll show you a little trick that I like to use to do that. I like to take a wrench and wedge it between the sprocket and the chain, like so. Smack the axle a couple times. Make sure everything's all the way forward. This is a lot less of an issue with these LiTeX adjusters because the tolerances are so tight in there that you really don't have much slop. You can see that I'm holding the wheel so that there is constant tension. Get your rear axle tight, make sure you get your wrench out of there before you try and ride the bike. Obviously. You could even double check the chain tension if you want. Sometimes the tightening of the axle can influence that. You know, we'll go out, we'll do one session on this, come back in, take a quick measurement, and see where we're at. I'm going to take a few minutes, put the sprocket cover back on, right? Just get everything tidied up, and we'll close this video out for you. Okay. We're done, we're ready to ride. Whether you're doing this for the racetrack or you're doing this for the street, what I'm gonna encourage is this. Before you take it out and you really go on that long ride or go out and just grit up to race, I want you to ride the bike a little bit. You did this yourself, right? This is an important thing. You know, do a few laps, come back in, check it out, make sure everything's okay. Ride around your neighborhood before you ride it on the street. Make sure everything looks cool. You don't see anything weird happening, right? You don't feel anything strange. And above all, if you see this and you're like, man, there's no way I can do this. Take the parts into your local dealer. They're gonna be happy to install these for you. Get a licensed mechanic working on the bike. That said, let's talk about some of the cool stuff we used here. Pitbull Pit Crew Tire Wedge supports the tires for wheel changes and stuff. Great tool, gotta have a Pitbull stand to use it. Duct tape. Everybody loves duct tape. Look what I did with duct tape. I didn't screw up the wheels, the swing arm, nothing. Allowed me to change my chain and sprocket kit and hold the wheel and the chain, loosen up that counter shaft. Motul, chain paste. This is great stuff, great maintenance item. A couple of cool tools. Chain alignment tool. Bike Master and Motion Pro's got one too. Very basic. And then this Cash Money Motion Pro PBR chain tool kit, riveter, breaker, a whole shebang. You're doing a chain kit, you gotta have something like that. And at this point, that's probably my favorite one, so that's the one I'm gonna recommend to you. This is our Vortex chain kit install on our 2015 Yamaha YZF R1 STG project bike.